Hi, I'm Alison, welcome back to my channel. Today I have some spicy fantasy romance book recommendations for you. So in today's video, I have, I think, six or seven fantasy romance books to recommend you that are kind of on the spicy side. They have a sexy, sexy scenes in them, if that's what you're looking for. I'm very excited. I cannot wait to get into them. And without further ado, let's do that. So I'm going to start this off with one that I just read recently, and that is The Dark King by Gina L. Maxwell. I don't often comp books to Akatar ever. I hate being like, if you like Akatar, I hate that. I hate when bitches do that. I'm like, no, don't do that. However, I'm going to eat my words because I read this and the best way to describe this book is Akatar meets the mortal instruments, but make it adult and sexy. 100% that is what this book is. So it is an urban fantasy. So it's set actually in Las Vegas, Nevada. Surprise, surprise. And what happened was 200 or something years ago, the night court and the day court had an affair with one another. And then the rest of the courts were like, that's a no-no zone, you can't do that. And banished them to the human world and then took away their powers. So the Fae still have Fae magic, but they don't have any of their court magic anymore. And also as part of their banishment was that the kings, their bloodlines, the royal bloodlines were cursed. And so whenever a king marries, his life will be tied to his wife or whoever his partner is. So we are following Caden. He is the dark king currently of the night court. He is living in Vegas with his two brothers. They are boss billionaire hotties and they're really living their life up as like basically the kings of Vegas. And then you have Brynn, she's a human girl. She gets this like weekend vacation for free at this Vegas resort. And she's like, oh great, love that. Gets there, uh, turns out it's Caden's hotel that she got the pass to. The two of them meet, they instantly hit it off, they get drinks, and then BAM! They wake up the next morning in bed with one another, naked with no memories, except for the fact that they both have wedding rings. And what does it turn out happened? Oh, that's right, they got married. You know what that means? A big boo-boo. Because initially Caden's like, oh, it's fine that, you know, we got married, she's a human girl, that doesn't mean that the curse isn't gonna be in effect since she's human. Goes to go leave, and then he starts dying because he's away from her. And he's like, what the actual F? So he then kidnaps Bryn because she's like, I am a human. He's like, you can't be human if I'm dying when I'm not near you. And so he kidnaps his wife and keeps her in his like basically castle, but it's like a Las Vegas castle. It's kind of, I never really understood that part of it, but yeah, that's what ends up happening. And so does their like reluctant romance with one another as they try and like break this curse and figure out what's going on and who Bryn really is. And it was so much fun. It does have really great BDSM elements to it as well. So that's pretty prominent in this. I had a great fun time reading it. It was such a blast. And it's one of like the best books that I have read this year to be quite honest with you. So highly, highly recommend it. Then we have one of my favorite books that I have read in 2022. 100% like this is gonna be one of my this is like one of my top 10 books of this year and that is Girled by Raven Kennedy This is book one in the Plated Prisoner series. It is a five book series Only the first four books are out currently the fifth book does come out next Is it? I was correct on that right? Yeah, five. The fifth book does come out like at the beginning of next year So you don't have long to wait when you do read this each book does end on a cliffhanger, but you'll survive I survived kind of not really i have a vlog reading this series if you do want to see my entire experience on my channel it has no spoilers in it until the very end if you are curious but i adored this for me this is for fans of throne of glass a hundred percent if you want throne of glass make it much 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 darker because this does have a lot of trigger warnings in it once again i'm not someone who normally compares things to sarah j maas because to me sarah j maas is such a queen like sarah j maas is one of my favorite authors of all time if this is your first time watching one of my videos i even have a fire heart tattoo from how much i love sarah j maas also if you're watching this video and you're looking for fantasy romance books and you haven't read sarah j maas like just close the video now and go read a sarah j maas book because like you should have done that very first off like she's like the number one fantasy romance author you should be reading like yeet yourself out if you have not read her but Guild by Raven Kennedy, this is a King Midas reimagining. And the reason why I say it's kind of like Throne of Glass is the fact that each book grows so much more than what the previous book was to the fact that like by the time you get halfway through the series, it's changed so much from the first book. Like Throne of Glass is not the same as Queen of Shadows vastly different plots the way that everything has progressed the secrets that have been revealed who the characters are has changed so vastly that it's hard to really explain a series so the only way i can explain this book without you know spoiling the entire series overall is that you have oren and she is the plated prisoner she's a gold plated prisoner she is a girl who was turned gold by king midas and is kind of kept as one of his 
non-sexual concubines and it's kind of her story that's all i can say i can tell you that there are fae in this really cool really unique fae they remind me a lot of when you read about like the unseelie court it is a slow burn romance there is no spice until book three but oh my god slow burn enemies to lovers forced proximity um, captive captive romance is kind of what goes on in here. It is absolutely amazing. It does have huge trigger warnings in it for on page rape, not of our main character, but of someone else. There is attempted sexual assault on page. There is Stockholm syndrome. There is toxic relationships. There is emotional abuse. There is physical abuse. There is a lot of different things going on in this. It is not a light and happy story, but it is so addictive. And Oren's journey just really will seep into your soul and it will just like. Oh, if you loved Era Fire specifically in the Throne of Glass series, you will love this because that is what this series reminded me the most of with Oren's journey was Aelin's journey in that sense. So highly, highly recommend this as well. The next one we have is King of Battle and Blood by Scarlet St. Clair. This is book one in the Adrian and Isolde trilogy. The second book in the series is coming out in December. This is a vampire romance series. We love that. I literally love my vampires so much. And this is definitely bringing them back. So you have Isolde and she's a human princess of a kingdom. And then you have Adrian and he is a vampire king. And he's basically an, an overlord conqueror who has been going around to all the different kingdoms and conquering them and making them as like part of his empire. When he gets to Isolde's kingdom, she ends up offering herself as a marriage alliance so that he does not actually conquer her people and so that she can actually save them. And so she ends up going with him as his queen instead, as like basically a sacrifice. Except for the fact that she tries to murder him on their wedding night. She's like, let's do the sexy times, what well, bam bitch. Except for the fact he's a vampire and like she tries to stab him and it does not work. He just like heals instantly. And he's like, you just tried to stab me while we're having sex. And she's like, I did. Shit. <laughs> It's very good. This is probably the smuttiest, the spiciest one out of all the ones that I have on this list as well. So if you are liking vampires, if you want like a really fun, really quick read too, definitely pick this one up. Keeping you on the Scarlet St. Clair vein, I actually do have A Touch of Darkness by her as well. I read this this year and it's kind of funny. I avoided all like the Hades and Persephone retellings because I don't know, everyone was reading them back in 2021 and I was like, eh, no, nah, whatever, I don't really wanna get into that. Read this this year and it was so amazing. This got me 100% out of a reading slump and I was so grateful for it because the writing style in this, Scarlet just has a very easy writing style to get into and it's very easy to flow through and you can just kind of pick this up and just enjoy it for what it is. And I think a large part of that also comes from the fact that like, if you do like Greek mythology and you understand Greek mythology and you know your Greek gods, you will have no issues reading this because all the fantasy magic in this is based off the Greek myths. So there's nothing really in this that is like too hard to understand. And so if you are in a reading slump, I highly do recommend this one. So it's a Hades and Persephone retelling. Um, I don't really know what else to say. In this, Persephone is a journalist and she ends up going to Hades to do like an expose article on him because he runs, I think like a nightclub and he makes all these bargains with people. And she's like, your bargains aren't fair. So I'm going to expose you. And then actually enters into a bargain with him instead. And so it's very fun. Um, I'm so excited because after you read this, you have to read, um, I think it's Game of Fate. Yeah, A Game of Fate, which I have to read. And that is um, a, told from Hades perspective. So you alternate between one book that's in Persephone's, one book that's in Hades and X and Y and Z. But the book is not the exact same. So when you do read the book from Hades point of view, you actually get to see like all this other stuff that was going on because they don't spend all this time together and it actually add so much more to the story. It's really unique to be quite honest with you, so. Yes. We then have A Curse and Ash by Julie Zantopoulos. This is another urban fantasy romance. And in this one, you've got Fae and Witches and it's polyamorous, which we always love. Um, so in this one, you're following Aisling and she is a very, very powerful witch. And as part of being a witch, one of the best things that can happen to you is to have, I forget what exactly the word is, but it's to have like a conduit, basically, someone who is able to amplify your powers, like a human amplifier, basically. And you know, you're very lucky if you get one of those. And one day she actually meets the guy who is supposed to be her human amplifier because it's like basically like a bond thing. Like you have to like have a bond to this person in order to be able to use magic in that sense. So she meets this guy one day and that's Reardon, except the fact that he wants nothing to do with Aisling because his entire family was murdered because they were human like amplifiers. And so he has no desire to do that until they end up learning that there is a curse that has come upon their town and in order to break it, they have to work together. 
And so it's really fun in that sense. But also Aisling is currently engaged to one of the Dark Fae princes. And she's been engaged since he was a kid and they're like best friends. And it is so amazing because you think, oh my God, it's going to be a love triangle. But no, because the Dark Fae prince guy, Brynark, my favorite babe ever. He's like, oh, you like this human boy? Okay, you can be with him as well. We can both be your lovers. We can be together, all of us. And I was like, oh my God. I was like, yes, I loved him so much. He was also the guy who like, they'd be out fighting and doing stuff and she'd come home after like a long day. He'd be like, I made you dinner. I was like, I want a dark fate prince who sits at home and plays video games guarding me and makes me dinner. A hundred percent, I want that. Oh my God, it was so fun. I dug it to the max. It was so good. So, so, so good. And then the last fantasy romance I have for you is actually a manga because I like to sometimes throw in mangas in my recommendation videos. And that is going to be I'll Never Be Your Crown Princess. Now this is an isekai and what an isekai means, that's a genre of manga that is basically the reincarnation trope. So either the main character um, died in the, in on earth and is reincarnated either in another world she is reincarnated in a book that she had read or she is reincarnated into like a video game she was playing like a dating simulation and so and so in this one you've got Liddy and she has been reincarnated as the daughter of this duke which is really great she's like oh bomb.com I'm the daughter of a duke gonna have a great life except for the fact that she finds out that she's supposed to be engaged to the crown prince and she's like oh I don't want to be the crown princess because the crown prince has a bunch of concubines and I don't want to be like second to all of his like mistresses basically. And so she's like, I'm going to not do this. So what does she do? She goes to lose her virginity to a random stranger at a masquerade ball. Cause if she's no longer a virgin, she can't marry the crown prince because the crown princess has to be a virgin princess. And so she's like, I got this. It's going to be great. Except for the fact that the stranger that she does the do with is the crown prince. That's right. She done fucked up. And to make matters even worse, he didn't know who she was when he had sex with her either during that night of masquerade ball heavy petting. And he ends up branding her with this um, magical rose mark that basically says like they're meant to be together and like she's going to be like his love. And it's just like, oh my God. So <laughs> So she screwed up and now she has to be the crown princess. And so it's really fun. Definitely recommend it. And yeah. Anyway, that is going to be it for my fantasy romance recommendation video. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know below. If you want to see more of me, please go to my channel and don't forget to check me out over on Instagram and on TikTok. And until next time, thanks a bunch everyone. Bye-bye.